to the Renaissance and welcome to The Negro's Worst Enemy, A Reply, Part 1. And here is a very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that this video is not a propaganda or entertainment video. It is for educational, informational and reference purposes only. Please look for the referenced sources and study them yourself. Remember, the Negroes would worship a straw if they thought it had the power of enriching them. Sir Richard Phillips, 1820. And from the Great Britain Colonial Office, the Yoruba Kingdom occupied a large area which may at one time have extended from the Niger as far even as Accra and thus have included the greater part of what is now Dahomey. And this is from the Colonial Report of the British, published 1947. The Debate We have seen that Islam and Christianity were and still are the tools of slavery and the slave trade, and that both have nothing to do with the creator of heaven and earth, but mere ideologies of the slave hunters, mainly the Europeans and Arabs, where those religions are merely to subtly impose their superiority upon the Negroes. And please remember, we left other religions outside this discourse because they were not part of the slave trade. We are looking at these two religions that are still working together till tomorrow morning to enslave the Negroes. And if you have researched the slave trade, you will see that both of them did it together. And if you looked at something like the Biafran Nigerian War of 1967 to 70, it was the Christians that supplied the bombs and weapons with which the Muslims unleashed their terror against the Negroes of Biafra. Above all, it was the Muslims, mainly the Arabs, that actually flew the fighter jets because their slave hunting partners, like we told you, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. They did not have any pilots at that time. So the slave master and his slave hunting partners, that's the Europeans and Arabs, mainly the British, had to arrange fighter jet pilots for them. And likewise, if you looked at Biafra agitation and Ambazonia freedom fight today, you will see they are all working together against the Negroes because both Biafra and Ambazonia are Negroes. And remember, we maintain that if there was any power in these two religions, the slave hunters of Europe and the Arabs would never have given them to the Negroes. It's impossible. This is like somebody who was coming to rob you with a stick, giving you a machine gun or something akin to that to protect yourself with, knowing that he was coming to rob you. So we shall ultimately prove beyond any reasonable doubts that the reason they stopped what they called paganism was because that's the truth and that's where the power was. So they needed them to be powerless, to make them vulnerable by giving them the golden calves of Christianity and Islam. And we have also seen how the same Christians and Muslims, mainly the Europeans, the Americans, and of course, the Arabs, are still working together today. If you doubt this, put it in the comment section and we'll take it further. Or if you have not found time to research it yourself, because they are all working together against the Negroes. And as we already told you, Biafra and Ambazonia today will expose who was behind the slave trade and at the same time, it will also expose the religions of Christianity and Islam as mere golden calves used by the slave master and his slave hunting partners against the Negroes. We have also shown that the Nigerian army and the armies in that sub-region that was Negroland and Guinea were the slave hunting terror groups simply dressed on borrowed robes as if they were supposedly protecting the territorial integrity of the areas, whereas they are protecting the colonial interests and the interests of the slave master and his slave hunting partners. This is why you see that the same way abolitionists and the Quakers were treated during the slave trade, they were not allowed to condemn the slave trade, they were not allowed to demonstrate peacefully against the slave trade. It's the same thing you see those armies doing today in Biafra and in Ambazonia. So the moment you mention freedom, they are sent after you. That's why you see that the Nigerian Senate, despite all the insecurity, all the agitations, you notice that they don't ever talk about the fact that people are looking for freedom. 
it was the same thing the slave master did during the slave trade to prevent people from agitating for negro freedom so he had to stop them from talking about it this is also why you notice that their media does not carry the agitations they prefer not to talk about it believing that the agitations will either die down or they will use their slave hunting partners to subdue the negroes and make sure they keep them enslaved but from our last video we saw how the slave hunters mainly the fulanese hide behind the institutions to deploy their subterfuges against negroes and other negroid groups in the area and this is the basis of this response video because we are responding to a comment we received from our last video and we saw a letter written by the nigerian security services alleging that there was a plan by the negroes in the east fighting for freedom and how they were allegedly shipping explosives from lagos to a town in all which they had tried to attack twice that is the slave hunting militia went there twice to attack innocent people and based on their slave hunting history and how they did it back then normally they would come and plant themselves as enemies within which is something they repeated during the lockdown which we suspect strongly was a plan between them and the slave masters and they moved from the north to the southern part of nigeria in their numbers during the lockdown and we also saw how the slave master uses the non-negroes against the negroes due to their lack of humanity and common sense which has become obvious based on what they are doing there today for example you will never hear them talk about negotiations in biafra or in ambazonia the reason being that they still consider the negroes as their slaves and their duty is to make sure they do the bidding of the slave master to keep them enslaved you don't need to believe us they will expose themselves shortly at least ask yourself if the media in europe and america and the middle east do not report on the agitations for freedom in biafra and in ambazonia or the wars going on there what does that tell you conspiracy and monologue remember that during the slave trade it was a capital offense for negroes to ask for freedom remember that that is you cannot say you wanted to be free it was illegal so when you hear people telling you how the slave trade lasted for 400 years one of the things we would want you to think about is why it lasted for so long and what and what the people did at that time did they just sit back and continued enjoying it or they condemned it if they did how and how did they condemn it what and what did they do and today if you looked at what was negro land and guinea it is also an offense to agitate for freedom and our biggest proof of it is for you to look at Biafra and Ambazonia. You can't agitate freely for freedom. And if you came out to do that, the slave hunters will kill you. And the slave master's media will never report it. And the slave master will never condemn the killing because they are doing what they ask them to do. You don't need to believe us. That's why you notice that each time somebody talks about freedom, it is the army that is deployed. We ask you again. Who created those boundaries? Who created Nigeria? Who created Cameroon? And in the event you have forgotten, when they claim that the army is protecting the territorial integrity of Nigeria or whatever that means, when Obasanjo single-handedly, although on the surface, we all know he was working for the slave master, having been in the slave hunting militia called Nigerian army himself, when he handed Bakasi over to Cameroon and made some people stateless in their own supposed country. Why do you think the same army that you were deceived to believe was protecting you never even issued a statement? That's because the army were the slave hunters. They don't move unless they are asked to move. They are there for a purpose and that purpose is Negro slavery and subjugation. You don't need to believe us. You just need to look at the history of the army. Ask yourself who was the first person that enrolled in the Nigerian army and who called for that enrollment? That will begin to answer your question. And so, ideally today, colonial boundaries like one Nigeria or one Cameroon is a code for slavery and slave trade. And so, have you at least wondered what use are things like ECOWAS, African Union, Christianity, Islam and African media outlets? Have you tried to at least wonder what use they are and what good they do for the Negroes at least if you followed the case of the Reverend Father Gordon Baker 
and how we saw him criticize a fellow Christian in Jonathan, supported a Muslim, invited Muslims to what he would call the altar of his God, which is the Roman deity he follows, and we remember how the APC must have gone to whisper their planned removal of Emeka from Imo State and imposing a candidate that finished fourth in the election, which if you looked at it from a very objective point of view amounts to injustice. The church kept quiet. The church never suspended him. But you notice that the moment he condemned Buhari or spoke about Kano, the same church came out to sanction him. That's because, like we told you, believe it or not, the Christians and Muslims are working together. You don't need to believe us. You will see it even if you don't see it now. You will see it later. And why do you think the African news media channels do not report on Biafra and Ambazonia the same way the Slave Masters media channels do not? Why do you think so? Don't you think they must have met somewhere and agreed not to? And so, why does the slave master and his slave hunting partners insist on their monologue against the Negroes? At least we saw the case of a simple telephone interview with the freedom fighters and how they were sanctioned. Remember, part of the reason the slave master and his slave hunting partners succeed in their evil plans is because the Negro believes what he hears. Faith cometh by hearing. That's why the slave master works to prevent the Negro from hearing the truth so that he can be hearing lies and believing it. And that's why he sponsors the likes of the Nkalawe to continue propagating those lies. You don't need to believe us, but you will ultimately believe us or at least if you conduct basic research of what the situation was like for Negroes between 1434 and 1900. It will answer your question. You don't need to believe us or believe anybody. The voice of Jacob. You may have heard some so-called African Americans trying to distance the Negroes in what was Negro land and Guinea from themselves. And you see the liars like the Nkalawe and Kurimu Ahau disparage, denigrate and sometimes deny Negro heroes and heroines. Have you wondered why they do it? And who they are doing it for remember if you are doing something is either you're doing it for yourself or you are doing it for somebody else or at least for humanity but there must be a purpose have you wondered what purpose they are doing those things for and why they woke up from nowhere and started claiming that the Negroes were now indigenous to the United States so that means those in Cuba are indigenous to Cuba those in Haiti are indigenous to Haiti those in Jamaica are indigenous to the area, those in Europe are indigenous to it, and everywhere else. Have you wondered why they are doing it? At least before you start telling a story or a lie, you must have gotten it from somewhere, or at least you came up with it yourself for a purpose. Have you wondered what points they are trying to make by embarking on such narratives that are lies? We all know they are lies, but they keep telling them. Have you wondered why? And so it is that monologue that's the reason the slave master and the slave hunting partners lied against the Negroes. Remember they keep telling you how it was a sale and they keep saying Africans sold other Africans. Somebody sold the other person. Now we ask you, how can you sell an 18 year old boy? We are talking of a boy now. And how can you sell a man that is 28 or 30 with his wife and his children? You just sell them. How can you do that without military force? Remember, the reason they keep telling you it's a cell, it's a cell, was because at that time, when people condemned what they were doing, they were able to tell them that the Negroes were like cattle. If you know how cattle is, you just go and take that cattle, that they are not human, and that the hair on their head is wool, like that of sheep. And that's why, if you notice, the Negroes have a hair, woolly hair, different from the slave master's straight hair. So that's why they were able to convince everyone at that time that the Negroes were like cattle. So when they looked at the number, they claimed that they are just there, we just go and take them, they don't fight, they don't put up any resistance. So that's what people believe and that's why you keep hearing them saying slave trade, sell, sell, sell. But now that they have seen that it's coming out in the open that it couldn't have been a sell, that's where they got people like the Nkalowe to start now saying it is aborigine so that the next generation will not hear about the slave trade. That's all they are trying to do. You don't need to believe us, we shall prove it to you. And the other purpose for trying to distance them from Africa is so that when they send their slave hunting partners 
to fight war against the Negro freedom in Biafra and in Ambazonia, it will likely be coming from the United States and it will be mostly so-called African Americans. So if they don't break the relationship, it will be difficult to deploy them to go and kill their siblings. That's all they are trying to do, the non-Negroes. Do you remember our video on Fulani, the enemies within, some years ago? Have you wondered why the slave masters media like the BBC all work for and in favor of the Fulani? For example, in your Facebook, you will notice that they are all in support of things like One Nigeria. It was the same gang up, the same conspiracy against the Negroes. That's what they are doing. It's not about bribe. We will show you the economic part of what they are doing and why they are doing it. You don't need to believe us. It will be so obvious that you will wonder why you didn't know about it before now. And if you know the dependency theory and you find time to at least conduct the research about how the slave trade happened, it will also help you understand why they are all in support of their slave hunting partners. At least that will expose them further. It's not strictly based on the dependency theory. But remember, they defined the dependency theory as something like a notion that resources flow from a periphery of poor and underdeveloped states to a core of wealthy states. So if you looked at it from a global perspective, you will understand how they are related. But going forward, remember that the Fulani believes that slave raiding or hunting was right and to date they still believe it. So the key thing here is they believe it was the right thing to do. And so permit us to ask you, if someone believes that it is right to capture and export humans as slaves till today, what more do you need to understand who was behind the slave trade and how they are still doing it till today? And so imagine a scenario where after the Negroes were hunted, captured and sold as slaves from circa 1434 to circa 1900, the Nigerian and British army went and raided a bunch of priests alleging that they were behind the slave trade. Now permit us to ask you, was it not the British that was buying the slaves? Was it not the British that won the Asiento contract to supply slaves? Are you now telling us that the British would have gone to raid and kill those that were allegedly selling slaves to them? Does that really make sense to you? You believe that a bunch of priests could have been the ones that sold 500 to 5,000 and millions of people over 400 years and then the British army and the Nigerian army will go and raid and destroy them and tell everyone that these were the slave hunters. Remember, what they are doing today has already given them away. If only you can read how they did it in the past. That's all you need. If you read how they did these things in the past, it will expose whatever they are doing today. You notice that they will go and kill innocent people and display them as terrorists. So if you try to defend yourself as a Negro, you become a bad slave and you become a terrorist. The same thing they are doing today. You see the Nigerian army doing it. You see the Nigerian police doing it. And they are doing it only in the South. What does that tell you? And so you see that today, despite the records, the books, and all accounts of the slave trade showing who was behind it, you will see that somehow it's now a conspiracy when the actual culprits are talked about as being behind it. The Fulani have no apologies. They are still doing the same things they were doing back then till today. If you doubt what we're saying, if you have any Fulani around you, ask them to negotiate with Biafra and see what happens. And that will at least give you a little idea of the difference between conspiracy and truth. And remember when we mentioned that the slave master's devil is the Negro's God, while the Negro's God is the slave master's devil, it's actually what it means. If you try to capture a slave and the slave defends himself, then he becomes a terrorist. That's what is see happening in Nigeria, for example. The Fulani army will go and kill somebody for defending his land against the herdsmen that come and destroy the crops because that's how the Fulanis do the conquest, which we shall continue to elucidate on this channel. So it is expected that as a slave, the Negro should just behave himself and accept slavery. That's what you're seeing. So if you doubt what we're saying, tell us anything if you are from Nigeria or Cameroon that you have seen those from the south agitate for and they said let's give it to them remember those so-called asu lecturers have been agitating and negotiating for years have the government paid them but you see the slave hunters today they can kidnap people and the government pays them ransom 
if you ask them tomorrow they will tell you what of those in the niger delta they were also kidnapping but you notice that while the slave hunting militia called nigerian army goes to the south to kill innocent people it doesn't ever go to attack the likes of gumi the likes of the bandits the army will be there where the negotiation is being talked about and so again we ask you do you still have any doubts that the christians and muslims are still working together you observe that your pastors your priests your imams do not condemn the killings what does that tell you and then if you remember during the biafran war the slave master and his slave hunting partners massacred innocent people everywhere they could same way they did as slave hunters but used the bbc to blame what they called the rebels and if you looked at the portacourt stadium today it used to be called liberation stadium if you have forgotten that liberation was indicative of the fact that they were liberated from Biafra that had come to kill them. Remember what the slave master was doing was he will come and disguise as Biafran soldiers and massacre innocent men, women and children. Remember, these were the slave hunters. There is no form of humanity in them. And that's why we still tell you till tomorrow morning, if Christianity and Islam had any power or anything good for the Negroes in them, the slave master would never have given it to them. You don't need to believe us they will expose themselves with what they are doing today so then they will massacre innocent people that's why if you notice sometimes you hear something like they say in the south south that biafrans killed them that's where it came from so when they do it they will keep telling those people that these are the people that killed you but we came to save you that's the scenario they try to replicate they did the same thing when Abiyokuta was established. We shall look at that in a different video. The Dahomey people and the Fulanese came to raid the Ibars as slaves because they, those are Negroes. They went to hide under the rock until the British came as usual to pretend to be a peacemaker. Whereas they are also the buyers of the slaves. So you see how subtle the slave master is. That's why you see his BBC is all over the place in Biafra land. But going forward, during that Biafran war, they called the Biafrans, that's the Negroes looking for freedom, they called them rebels. If you notice today, they keep saying secessionist. You will never hear the word Biafra in those of them, especially in things like National Assembly. There's their subtle way of trying to criminalize it. That's all they are trying to do. You just have to read the historical records to understand who you are dealing with. So when you see the Fulani in Nigeria, for example, and in Cameroon, just understand that you are looking at the British, the Americans, the Arabs, and of course things like the Danish, the Dutch, the French, the Germans, and all the other countries that were involved in the slave trade. That's who they represent. If you doubt us, conduct your research and you will understand there is nothing that will be of advantage to the area that they will allow you to do. They work for the slave master. That's all you see them doing. That's an agreement they have, which we shall continue to prove to you. And their activities there will further prove them to you if you open your eyes and conduct basic research. And so all the slave master needed to do was to tell them that the pagans deserved to be enslaved. And back then, they used Islam to do it, and they are still using Islam to do it today. And that's why the Christians and Muslims are still working together against the Negroes. Permit us to ask you, when you see those governors in the Southeast and South-South, and they take sides with the slave hunters against their own people, what does that tell you? Ask yourself this simple question. And in the event you have forgotten the context, if you remembered when they were shooting people that were demonstrating for freedom with flags, they told you it was supposedly Northerners that were doing it. But today, when the unknown government came out to start killing the police and army and all that, they have started telling you that it is now your own brothers. That's because they always believe that the Negro is humanity. They can appeal to his conscience. The Negro is best representation of a human that has love in his heart. But the slave master figured a way to use their slave hunting partners who lack both humanity and common sense to paint the negro as evil so when you see those armies killing people you won't know that it is a different people for example you see that they are boko haram people they are not killing them all those things you read about is a lie they are not killing them but the fulani are doing their killings from behind as part of the jihad and conquest but those things they show you they have killed 300 boko haram here and there is a lie 
they are using that to kill the southerners who joined their slave hunting terror group now called army that's all they are trying to do it doesn't matter if one or two we are lucky to escape but if you believe in Boko Haram our question to you is how can you believe that despite rehabilitating and enlisting some of the so-called repented Boko Haram into the army they will go and be killing their brothers they are not killing any Boko Haram but they are willing to take the bad name while doing the damage in the south the army is in the south killing people because they are asking for freedom whereas the north is being ravaged although on media by bandits and Boko Haram and Fulani herdsmen, name it. But there are a lot of people in IDP camps. But they don't show you that they chase out the indigenous groups to the IDP camps or refugee camps and then the Fulani will occupy their places. But they keep deceiving you about how Boko Haram is killing people. Those are all lies. And that's why we challenge you with conspiracy and truth. Find out which one is true and which one is conspiracy. Because these people are lying. The problem is the Negro doesn't believe that somebody like the slave master can wake up and be lying all through. That's where the problem lies. But we are going to help the Negro rise above the lies he is being misled with. But again, their atrocities today will expose them. And now to the comment we are responding to. You may be wondering by now how this could be a response video. So we see where somebody that says his or her name is Molongese Wright said, If ESN, that is a group formed to stop the march of the slave hunters to the coast and against the Negroes. And ESN simply stands for Eastern Security Network. We shall look at that in a subsequent video. But our interest is this comment where it says, If ESN is doing it for self-defense, I have no issue. Though I wish people who America considers black would stop killing each other. And this comment is based on this lie from the slave hunters in Nigeria. Based on the voice of Jacob Code in their book. They claimed or allege that this group that were to defend the land against their terrorism. Remember, if they came out to say they want freedom, the army, which were the slave hunters, will kill them. So they now formed what would look like an armed group to defend the land against their invasion and terrorism against the Negroes. We continue to call them Negroes because we consider Negroes as the same group, which if you research, you will find out what we mean. They are different from the others. So the Nigerian state, which is controlled by the slave master and his slave hunting partners, the same way they do in Cameroon and all the countries in that sub-region. That's exactly what those countries are, which we shall prove to you. If you doubt it, conduct your own research. Now, if you look at the letter, they claim that intelligence revealed that the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOB slash Eastern Security Network have acquired bombs and improvised explosive devices with which to further their subversive activities. Now, if you know their pedigree, if you know who these people are, these were the slave hunters, what they are going to do now is they are going to go look for bombs and bomb soft targets, innocent women and children. Then the BBC will help them and say, you see, that's that thing we told you that they have planned to bomb places. That's what they are doing. But you may be wondering, what is our challenge with the comment? The comment tried to suggest that this could be true. Because it's either the person that made the comment, we're going to be qualifying the person as he, does not know who he is dealing with or did not understand what we were saying in the video. So when they have plans to kill innocent people, that's what they normally do. They did it during the Biafran war. And if you are wondering why we have an issue with the comment, look at the comment again. It says, if ESN is doing it, that's like suggesting that the intelligence could be true. And if it is true, let's assume they are doing it for self-defense. Remember, if they explode a bomb in a secondary school, killing innocent children, and the BBC, as usual, will tell the rest of the world that it was done by the secessionists. This time they are using secessionists. They will lose the sympathy of the rest of the world. And no sensible person will believe you that you bombed innocent women and children in a school as self-defense. It's impossible. But then their alibi is going to be, remember our intelligence showed that they were moving explosives, even though they have denied it. 
but like we told you the slave master and his slave hunting partners they are still working together against the negroes and then if you looked at the comment you might think it is just an ordinary comment we looked at the history of the comments made by this individual on this channel remember at that time if they bomb the schools this same person will say how can you say bombing schools and innocent children is self-defense whereas it was done by the same slave hunters that's why they issued the memo in the first place anything they plan to do let's say a man and a woman got divorced and they wanted to frame the man or the woman they can go and let's say damage the car belonging to the woman somewhere and say it was the man and bring somebody to come and say the man sent him to come and do it that's how they start then ultimately they will now go to the woman's house for example if they are targeting the man and kill the woman's children or something and then it becomes very easy to say it was the man remember that's why we told you about monologue they have to be the only one speaking and everything they will say must be a lie that's why you notice that even in their church you don't ask the priest questions on the pulpit because the church came from the slave trade and it was the slave master that would have been delivering that sermon so how can a slave be asking master questions but then we replied the user saying we are telling you the ESN slash IPOB do not have any such thing planned remember our interest is the slave hunters we know who they are and what they have done in the past like we told you Chibok was something they faked they orchestrated it is clearly choreographed but you see how the world over it is believed that's why the slave master says they are genius you will see who these people are you don't need to believe us just watch and see because the British mainly the English and the Fulanese were the biggest slave trading empires in the world they can't live without slavery so everything you see happening there is them the event you have forgotten we mentioned to you about how they moved a lot of them to the south during the lockdown you remember this tweet in February where it says the BBC has removed African Asian minority ethnic executives to create an all white board you remember this petition and all that if you don't know who the slave master is we recommend that you go and study the slave trade study it in detail at least try to understand how a man and a woman let's say 400 of them can be captured and sold when you understand how that is done you will understand who the slave master is as it stands you won't understand it because you still think it was possible for a man or a woman to be sold that is somebody will just come into your house with you and your children and you follow the person and the person has no guns to take you with him but we replied the user further saying the DSS issued that propaganda so they can go from behind bomb innocent people and the BBC will say it was the separatists and please don't forget that the jailbreak they staged that as well it was choreographed nobody left the jails and we challenge you to wait it doesn't matter if you believe us or not investigate it yourself but then this same person replied I am saying that even if they did, there is nothing wrong with self-defense, you have to defend yourself. Now, because this person either doesn't know these people or she is playing a different game altogether, that's why she's saying this. Because tomorrow when they carry out that terror attack, because we know them, there is nothing about them that we haven't studied to a T. She will be the first to say, how can you say bombing innocent women and children could have been done by the Nigerian state? And remember there will be obvious loopholes but they will continue to propagate it and for some weird reason people believe it it's just like when you ask somebody who believes strongly in the september 11 attacks where the debris of the plane that allegedly hit the pentagon or the one they claimed they fought the terrorist and they crashed in the bush where their plane debris were you will discover that there is no plane debris but people still believe it for some reason that's the same thing that will happen so at that time when they carry out this attack because they've obviously planned it before you say it you notice that the letter claims to be secret at least you can see that at the bottom it says secret and it says the contents of this correspondence are classified unauthorized disclosure could lead to prosecution now you might think that it was actually secret they deliberately made it open the essence of it is so that when they carry out the attack they will carry it out themselves 
the question will be didn't you hear when we told you that they were planning it they were moving improvised explosive devices they were planning to explode bombs to carry out their subversive activities and what is their subversive activities it is just that they want freedom and they are trying to stop the herdsmen remember these people come in live within you as enemies within which we shall show you in a subsequent video or if you have time at the end of this video we'll show you who these people are and how they come in they come in and live within you as enemies within and trying to resist them attracts the rot of the slave hunters which was why the nigerian army which was the slave hunting terror group declared freedom fighting terrorism so that's why they are calling it subversive activities. They believe that the Negroes are created to be slaves. That's how the slave master conditioned them. So they walk towards that goal. Nothing more. We shall prove it to you. You don't need to believe us. You will see what is happening. So they believe they are justified. They are right to enslave others and to kill people where necessary. But then they play smart. So they will go and do this bombing themselves. And then the BBC will be telling the world that it was done by the separatists. The same way they did the prison break. Remember, the prison break was fake. They staged it, they planned it, they choreographed it. And so this made us look at some other comments made by the same user to allow us understand where he is coming from. And that comment said, I've listened to his videos. What he is saying is that his tribe, the Igbo, did not sell other Igbo because in order to be able to surround and capture a village, it would take a military operation. Remember, this is a lie. That has never been what we said. We said the Negroes were the same group and that Igbos were the names they used to qualify all Negro slaves exported from the Bight of Biafra and Benin. So where is she getting this narrative from? And he goes on to write, to get from miles slash kilometers apart, it would take swift movement which could not be done on foot. Horses had to be used and only the Fulani tribe had them, at least according to him. You see how unfortunate it is that people like this waste their time, watch our videos. Instead of going to look for the books to read, he is coming up with this very shameful comment. And previously, he had made this comment as regards his identity and he said neither i am black american but with a bantu name linguisi is a bantu word not fulani i just want to know why you want to convince Igbo, ejo ibibio ogoni mambila or whatever to go by names like negro or ethiopian there are dictionaries of languages for all over the world that's all i am saying so you see that these are the same group they use against the negroes remember they use the non-negroes in africa because of their lack of humanity and common sense so in all that we have said and explained all the person is getting is why we want names that we don't even know their meanings Igbo, like we told you believe it or not is well documented as all the slaves exported from the bites of benin and biafra that is the bite negroes that's what they mean by Igbos. And remember that all these other names, Ejo, Ibibio, Ogoni, Mambela, whatever, did not exist until towards the end of the slave trade. They were coined much later as part of the divide and conquer. And so please note that the slave trade did not get to South Africa. This person writing claims to be a Bantu. The Bantus are from the South Africa area and they are not Negroes. That's the Zulus, the Kafirs, as they were classified. All these classifications were done by the slave master. But what they want us to do is to believe and accept every tag the slave master brings from wherever. For example, if you notice, this Nigeria tag was the slave master's appellation, which was adopted during the colonial era. Remember, the colonialism was simply the slave trade repackaged. So they did it right there in what was Negro land and Guinea, instead of the system of shipping them. That's actually what they did, which we shall look at in the subsequent video.